Welcome to our BWSI Build a CubeSat Challenge 2024 final project from Team Escape Velocity. Hi, I'm Arka, and uh, my teammates are Skanda, Bharat, and Indira. So me and Skanda both live in Texas, um, while um, Indira and Bharat uh, live in Washington, but this doesn't stop us from all working together. So what is the problem that we are trying to address? Well, flooding is a huge issue across the globe, and this is what we want to focus on. Uh, keep in mind, roughly 5 million hectares of farmland is flooded annually, and these rates are constantly increasing as a result of climate change and global warming. Uh, we're specifically focusing on flooding involving farmland, as developing countries such as Malaysia, Pakistan, and Libya, which all face major flooding events between 2022 and 2023, uh, rely on farming and agricultural for both their economy and for feeding and funding their people. Flooding, uh, the reason it's so uh, harmful to farmers, is because it causes a loss of beneficial layers of topsoil and washes away crops and soil, so it leaves areas where crops just cannot grow. Uh, this loss of crops impacts food availability, the economy, employment, and this is all on a long-term basis. It's not just for a short period of time. We will use our CubeSat to provide information to help authorities better help farmers whose land has been affected by flood and erosion. The cameras on the satellite will pick up the areas after the flooding has happened. However, we still have images from before the flooding stored inside the grounds, ground computer. We analyzed uh, these two images and we can compare the amount of vegetation from before and after the flooding to determine how much damage the flooding has caused. Based on this, uh, we will be able to provide information like how much uh, money has been, uh, how much damage the flooding has caused to the economy and how many jobs have been lost as a, re as a result of the flood. So our CubeSat design is fairly simple with the main components, including the power source, the IMU, and the control systems. And for our CubeSat, we mounted the camera onto a stand, which was facing downwards towards the ground, similar to how a satellite faces the Earth's surface. And we decided to cut down the two solar panels from the side because it just didn't, we just didn't have enough space for that. And for our CubeSat, we'll have it take photos on command from the ground station, and this will transmit the photos of, set, of the flooding to be analyzed by the ground station. What you see here is a brief schematic, and it also demonstrates the distribution of power within our CubeSat. As you can see, the power source is connected to the solar panel where it receives the power from. Then the Raspberry Pi is connected to two separate things. The camera, which will actually be taking the photos of the before and after of the flooding and sending it back to the ground station, and the IMU. Here you can see a video of the CubeSat being booted up. As you can see, we plug in the power supply, and the Raspberry Pi turns on. And once it's booted up, we go to the ground station, which in this case is our computer, and we use PuTTY to connect wirelessly to the Raspberry Pi. From here we log in. And once we're logged in, we run the program to acquire the images from the CubeSat, which will then be analyzed the before and after to ensure we understand how much topsoil and vegetation has been lost.
So to create our demo, uh, our demo was supposed to model farmland and especially in more uh, topographical, topographically high areas. So we wanted to model uh, the real soil horizons that are used under farming and agricultural land. So to create this, we started with a base of a tarp, which sort of represents the bedrock layer. Then we put gravel for parent rock, sand for subsoil, and then finally topsoil and vegetation. This is supposed to accurately represent how a farm might look, and we later washed it away with actual water to show how it might accurately represent flooding in farm areas. As I mentioned previously, we tried to create it as accurately topographically uh, as we could. So as you can see, most farms are created on the lower, uh, less um, less high areas, such as in the example of Sacred Valley in Peru. You can see that the mountains coming off are 10 to 30 and 5 to 10 degrees respectively. And near the bottom where the actual farming is being done, it's mostly flat and leveled out, as well as the Himalayan foothills, foothills in Nepal, where again, the same 10 to 30 and 5 to 10 degree uh, ratio. And near the bottom, it levels out and that's where the farming is being done. The reason this is important is because when flooding occurs, it's usually coming off the sides of these mountains into the valleys, and it's usually washing away the farms that are on those flat areas. So in our model, we tried to replicate this by building our model on a hill in our backyard, uh, where you can see the same kind of 10 to 30 degree, 5 to 10 degree uh, line, and then it levels out near the bottom where we actually built the model. So we can accurately demonstrate how flooding might appear in certain topographical areas. So for our mission demo, as I talked about earlier, we had our CubeSat set up so that the camera was facing the ground, similar to how a satellite faces the Earth. And that's why we had it set up on a tripod. And then here is a video of us simulating rain water during a flood. So as you can see, we used a hose that's supposed to be our rain that is a simulating a flood. And as you can see, our the vegetation in our demo is slowly starting to be washed away, just like when there's flooding, the crops and vegetation on real farmland is washed away. So here's a before and after the flooding event. So uh, before, you can see most of the topsoil and vegetation is there, but after the flooding, it's all been washed away. Um, so um, this is what we try to track with um, a program and um, send that to the um, ground control. Uh, so, as I talked about before, um, there's the before and after, and um, after it passes through our program, this is what it outputs. So, um, you can see all the white spots uh, is the difference in the image, so what's been washed away, essentially. And um, this can um, tell you how um, impactful the flooding was and how much damage it's caused. The ground station keeps the images of each place before the flooding. These are compared with the images received from the CubeSat and is used to detect whether there is a flood or not. And if there is, we can calculate the damages. We first load in the images from the CubeSat and the reference images into the program, and then we threshold for all the green pixels. The green pixels are all the vegetation. We then find the difference between these two images. This would result in a matrix where all the values are zero or one, where the zero represents no damage and the one represents damage. To remove the noise image, we blur the image. Using this blur data, we can calculate the damage being caused. And since we already have the conversion from pixels to dollars, we can calculate the damage in dollars. This is assuming that the reference point is staying basically the same and the camera resolution must also be consistent for this program to work. So for our scaling, our demo represented the agricultural lands on a much, much smaller scale. And in this case, our demo 
represented a three square inches corresponded to one square mile. And in a real flight, the area shown here would correspond to about three agricultural communities or agricultural lands. And we approximated that the total population would be around 2,000 people, as shown in the India agricultural consensus. And with this approximate, 700 adults are dependent on agricultural or farm-related jobs. So the testing that we did, both with the CubeSat taking the photos and then the code actually analyzing these photos, we estimated that the loss of money for our uh, fictional land, that's, a, that's the certain amount of land that it is, would be around $300,000. So that would be the money that's needed um, to actually grow the crops, as well as the money that we're going to have to put uh, in to for the government to help these farmers um, build back their land. The total population impact for food supply in our demo world was about 800 people, which is 35% of the people who are living in the area, and approximately 300 people would lose their jobs. Uh, one potential error that we found is that when vegetation and growth may be agriculturally, uh, it's possible that the CubeSat would pick up external vegetation, such as trees or bushes, that don't have anything to do with crops, and this would result in an error in the program where we would find extra green that it might, while it may or may not be there after the flooding, it doesn't have any effect on the crops that's produced or the jobs that would be lost. We also found one issue was that the majority of damage that was in the demo was to the topsoil and the sand layers, and it was not actually to the vegetation. So the results of the analysis may be a little inaccurate in terms of finding, it, it, it does find out how much crops are lost, but it isn't able to find out how much usable topsoil is lost. So this is something that in the future, if we were to continue, we would have to uh, take a look at that. So we learned a few lessons from this uh, project. With Zafo, our team in Washington State and the other half in Texas, we had to balance work and collaborate, but we are still uh, able to get the job done. We had we also had to ensure that we're managing time, uh, and we had to learn to plan ahead because we needed to buy materials like gravel and topsoil. And that's all. So thank you for your time, and we hope to see you in the future.